motherfucking trailer! You're watching ETN, where we don't do news, we just talk entertainment. Share and subscribe. Okay, guys, welcome back. We had to go old school. A lot of you guys asked for it. You asked for me to do it during the stream, but I figured I'd do it for my trailer review video so that everybody could experience it, whoever didn't make it to the stream. And yeah, I know that I'm kind of doing this out of order, right? We did the breakdown already and everything, but, and this is really not necessarily a review review. This is just talking about the trailer in general, the feeling you got, the excitement. And since we're going to compare it a little bit to the last two trailers, 2014, as well as King of the Monsters. Mm, Skull Island, not so much. <laughs> All right. Um, look, this was a fantastic trailer, and it's evident by the response. I mean, here we are two days later. It's got nearly 30 million views on Warner Brothers' YouTube channel, which is insane. It is the top viewing trailer on Warner Brothers in a 24-hour period beating Batman. Incredible. There's a lot of interest generated on Twitter for this for this movie. We got celebrities tweeting about it. And, you know, some of this is due because of the pandemic, right? Everybody really hasn't gotten that one big, big blockbuster to get excited about. We had Wonder Woman, but the hype for that died down quick because the movie was so freaking bad. The tone set in this trailer was absolutely incredible from the moment it opened to the moment it ended. The special effects look incredible. I mean, watching it in high definition and watching it on stream, you could see the clarity. I mean, it was so, so much clarity. You know, when you think back to King of the Monsters, a lot of the scenes were well, in the dark. Even Godzilla 2014, one of the biggest complaints was towards the end, when you got to see the most of Godzilla, it was very dark. This trailer was very vibrant. It was colorful. But at the same time, I didn't think too much that it was very cartoony. But also... There seems to be, I think for the first time in this series, there seems to be stakes. And while we know at the end of the day what may or may not happen, just the feeling of dread knowing that Godzilla could be wrecking the world is just incredible. And despite my theory, despite what your theory may be, right now, as we see it, it is Godzilla as we see it, despite our theories, despite, you know, like I said, despite my theory. And this is something I've actually wanted. I've been wanting Godzilla wrecking the city in the MonsterVerse for the longest time, and now we're finally getting it. One of the things I want to point out in this particular trailer that really caught my attention, and I shared this on stream, was this particular scene here. Now, I've used this picture as a reference for my theory, but all theories aside, this scene is very reminiscent of Godzilla versus Mechagodzilla 74. When Mechagodzilla makes his second appearance, he makes his first one after he kills Anguirus, He's in, it's nighttime, he's in the city, and he's wrecking it very, very similar to this shot. Even that little dome on the left, I don't know if it's like a big tank or whatever, is present in the 1974 movie. Not in the exact same position, not the exact same size, but what I'm saying is, I feel personally, in my opinion, that this particular shot from the trailer pays a little homage to the 1974 movie when Mechagodzilla makes his second appearance disguises Godzilla. Again, I'm not going to that theory, okay? That's why I said I wanted to put that video on record. This could very well be Godzilla, and I know a lot of you believe it is, but the point I'm trying to make is it's just very reminiscent of that scene. So that's one thing from the trailer I took away, and it's probably one of my most favorite parts of the trailer simply because it's Godzilla wrecking a city, which is just incredible. The opening portion of the trailer always also sets the tone for this movie in terms of not only the stakes, but also the just the sheer disregard Godzilla is going to have on humans in this movie. And it's a very, very sh big shift. Again, all theories aside, the fact that Godzilla has turned on humanity or is now attacking humanity with no regard, with no thought is and the way they they portrayed that in this trailer is so dreadful. And I love it. It's absolutely incredible. And Kong showing the concern on his face for what he's up against, but at the same time, not backing down. I think that's great as well. Now, I know there's a lot of people complaining about the fact that Kong gets all the shots in this trailer. And you guys got to remember, really, really pause, calm down. There's something we say in a Puerto Rican culture, coge con take it easy, which means relax, okay? The point I'm trying to make, this is a two-minute trailer. Do you really absolutely think Kong's, I mean, Godzilla's not going to get his shots in? I mean, come on, guys. 
I hope you guys are smarter than that. So, you know, <laughs> just just calm down, okay? Godzilla's gonna get his shots, trust me. But I think they are setting up Kong in this trailer to look, you know, like he's gonna stand a chance. And, and I believe he should. We haven't seen Kong since Skull Island. We've only heard of him. We've had, you know, theories by everybody, myself included. But now we actually get to see how big Kong is, what he's capable of, his strength, and even some of the advantages that he's going to have in this movie over Godzilla. I mean, let's look at this shot right here, the money shot, the axe coming down at Godzilla. I mean, no monster has ever come at Godzilla like this with the same sort of aggression. I mean, it is incredible. Not even, you know, you think back to the Muto. Godzilla was more the aggressor than anything. The flying Muto would always try to fly at him and catch him off guard. And the female Muto was more concerned about her egg and she fought when she had to. But Kong is going at Godzilla in a different way. I mean, yes, he had an epic fight with King Ghidorah, but at the same time, King Ghidorah, the first fight, whooped Godzilla's ass and took off. And the second fight, I mean, it was Godzilla that initiated the charge, and of course, Ghidorah, being the alpha that he is, is going to charge back. But there's something about the way Kong is coming at Godzilla here. No fear. Everybody says, oh, Kong shouldn't be this, Kong shouldn't be that. And they're kind of playing up to this in the trailer, meaning that your thought process is that Kong shouldn't stand a chance. But this trailer is telling you he does stand a chance. And not only does he stand a chance, he has a good chance of getting in some really good shots. I think that's important to set the tone because we know Godzilla's strength. We've seen him in, in two movies now, up going up into this one. And we've seen everything he's capable of. We really haven't seen what Kong is capable of as a full-grown Titan. And I think that's why you got this trailer the way it was. The other thing I want to mention are the characters. I mean, this is something that I hope they improve. You know, we saw the last movie. The story got worse from the first movie. The first Godzilla 2014 movie, the story was okay. It was mediocre. But it really took a bad... It really really went downhill in King of the Monsters. So what I'm hoping for, looking at this trailer, I think... Uh, the little girl dynamic could really, really help along the story, especially considering she's linked to uh, King Kong or Kong, I should say. The advantage with this movie, I believe, especially when you look at the trailer and those scenes between Kong and the little girl, is that Kong is directly capable of communicating with humans in a certain way. And it seems like, in particular, he's going to have a special communication or a communi communicative relationship with the little girl. This is, I think, going to really help the story. I hope it does. I hope it's not something they crap on. Uh, there are theories out there that the little girl may die in the early going, and I hope that's not the case. That's the same mistake 2014 did with Brian Cranston. So it'll, it remains to be seen, but I do, I do think that dynamic is going to really help this story uh, elevate over the prior two stories. Another thing I want to mention in regards to the trailer was just the different thematic looks in the trailer. Not only the, the shots of the monsters fighting in day and night, but also everything around it. You know, the scenery is just beautiful. Everybody talks about the shot with, with Godzilla, with the neon light buildings. I mean, that's a gorgeous shot. So if this is what we can expect in the movie based on this trailer, these kind of different set pieces, uh, thematic tones and, and things of that nature, I think we're in for an incredible movie. I think a lot of people believe that which is why this trailer is doing so well and why a lot of people are excited. I think it's a combination of things. I think moving it up to March was probably the best move looking at it now. Uh, I was not against it. You know, I know there were some people against them moving up and there were some people like excited. I was indifferent. I didn't care one way or the other. My goal was to see the movie. But now looking at this trailer, looking at the way the pe people are reacting and then looking at its position versus other movies where we're not 100% sure if they're going to stick around in their slots, or even if they're, they're coming a little bit later, it's kind of like Godzilla versus Kong has the jump on a lot of people thirsting for a blockbuster movie that would normally come out in the summer or the spring, and it's coming out now. And I think that was a great move by Warner Brothers. Overall, I thought this trailer was beautiful. I think the shots are gorgeous. I think the stakes, even if we know what might happen in the end, at least they give the illusion that there are stakes to be had in this movie. And I got to tell you, Based on all three trailers in the MonsterVerse that are Godzilla-based, not necessarily talking about Kong Skull Island, this is right up there with the 2014. Uh, uh, 2019 was exciting, and we all got ex got excited, but they kind of really drained that excitement by over-marketing it. And our th obviously, our thirst to see something regarding this movie 
enhances that excitement. But in terms of the trailer, I think it delivered one way or the other, whether we would have seen it a year ago or whether we would have seen it six months ago. And it definitely, this right now, what's going on with this trailer, with the ETN channel, a lot of people coming back, feels like a reunion the last week. This is very reminiscent of 2014. And I am very happy about that. Anyway, guys, that's it for this video. Let me know in the comments section how you feel about the trailer overall, your general sense, your feeling, your vibe. And uh, don't forget, Thursday, we're going to have a stream on the channel at 8 o'clock. We're going to talk more about the theory. Primarily, I'm going to be responding to the comment section. So I want to give it a couple of days to generate. And uh, tomorrow night, I'll be on Fat Samurai Guy's channel for a stream there. And we got more videos coming today. I got a lot to catch up to, and I got a busy day outside of that. Also, last thing I want to mention, if you are a member of ETN, I will be uploading the first member video exclusive for those who had clicked that join button and are supporting etn so for you guys that have done that i appreciate it and you will be getting exclusive content going forward starting today and uh i know somebody's going to ask about that box of wheaties but that's an inside joke for those who go to the stream so you know exactly what that's for all right guys this is rob signing off for etn where we don't do news we just talk entertainment take it easy Thank you for watching ETN. Click here to watch more content. Don't forget to leave a comment. Also, make sure you like and share this video. If you want to know when the next video is up, click the notification bell next to the subscribe button. And most of all, make sure to click that subscribe button for regular content.